Peggy 18. Hey, I'm Zach Cooper, your Splinter Cell community developer. I'm joined, uh, amongst other people, by Jeff Eleanor, level design director on Spies vs. Mercs. Uh, Jeff, we are playing Spies vs. Mercs Blacklist, and uh, what that is exactly is four versus four. We know that much. Can you maybe give us some details as to how this differs from the Spies vs. Mercs classic, which we've uh, previously shown off? All right, well, this is Blacklist edition. So for starters, we got more people in the game. We're playing four people versus four people. And uh, in blacklist mode, it is really about the different relationships between the presets and the classes and the different loadouts that you can have and carry into the game. It tends to be a little faster paced with more people as well. All right, so, so now how does it work exactly in terms of the, the general approach to spies versus mercs? I mean, you know, we've got spies in third person perspective, we've got mercs in first person. But what does that exactly mean for the player experience? Obviously, they're very, very different. So as a, as a mercenary, you're searching the environment. Well, I'm going to die here. <laughs> Your job is to use what, what you're good at, which is shooting and, uh, and you know, sort of the in insane damage that you can provide. As a spy, you have the third person experience so you can see the environment and use it to your advantage. Now we're looking at your screen right now. You're in the uh, respawn screen. As you can see, you're about to come back to life. I'm um, coming back in to oh. try to keep my buddy the hacker alive. And uh, yeah, and that, that would be me. Over. I uh, I just I just bit the dust. You failed me, Zach. So, <laughs> what is your preset loadout? Who have you chosen, and, and what's that all about? Right now, I'm playing as the Predator, which means I have the ability to temporarily cloak and become invisible, which is useful because I want these guys to not see me as I move way over here. But now you're not obviously completely invisible when you're uh, when you've got your digital ghillie suit intact. That's um, correct. What what are the weaknesses when you do use that? Well, the digital ghillie suit lets me become largely invisible for a short period of time, and also uh, if enemies have the disruptor power or anything that uh, affects my electrical abilities at all, they'll be able to make me visible. Okay. Now we just saw you just initiated the hack. What are the general philosophies or, or, or good quality strategies that you should stick to when you are specifically the hacker? Uh oh. As the hacker, my, my main thing is I don't want to go near the enemy. <laughs> uh, oh boy. You know, I only want to engage when absolutely necessary. Um, and my, my role is to stay alive inside the zone. So now, when you are on the spies team, you've initiated the hack. So when they spot me, like right there, I'm going uh, to try and get out of dodge. Whereas I've EMP'd these, ah, oh, I, I almost took out both of them. I threw an EMP, which disables all uh, electrical uh, equipment. And uh, then I had the opportunity to try and take them both out, but I was unable to Right now, to, they're uh, up above me. Them. I'm using my, uh, using my sonar goggles to kind of know where they are. Uh, there's a third Merc coming in, so, uh, oh, somebody just saw me. So I realize now that this isn't going to be quite as easy as I had hoped as far as uh, concentrating on the game while, while interviewing you, uh, Jeff Eleanor, Level Design Director. Um, but I am going to drop down and kill this Merc right here, uh, which you can't see because we're watching Jeff's screen. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're trying to support the uh, hacker. And uh, you indeed are the hacker still, Jeff. And you can see at the top of the screen that we are at 88% upwards at 90 and uh, I could run around as I did as a decoy trying to uh, you know generate a little attention away from the hacker because all you basically need to do correct me if I'm wrong is, is sit pretty until that hack is complete like is the case exactly at this point uh, you know it got close for a minute there and Merck got close to me and spotted me but basically uh, what I'm doing is not being where he expects me to be I'm gonna take this guy out using the death from above uh, and Death Room Bub is really one of the, the hallmarks of the spy's strength. If a Merc walks directly underneath you, uh, you can drop down on him and kill him exactly the same way you can in the single player game. As I was just able to do, and now I'm going to initiate a hack. Alright, so, uh, where are we exactly? What is this level? What's it all about? And, uh, and talk to us about some of its features. We're playing in the Particle Accelerator, which is uh, 
basically supposed to be uh, like a scientific research facility, um, and you know, sort of the kind of place that uh, you know these guys aren't really supposed to be playing in. It's a it's a really unique location, uh, sort of modeled after and inspired by sort of uh, scientific uh, particle colliders that exist in the real world today. And oops, excuse me while I hide. Whoa! whoa. Oh boy! Oh, tried to rush a Merc head on. Yeah, Always I'm in, a I'm bad in trouble idea. here. I'm I'm the hacker, and uh, and I got like three Mercs bearing down on me. Right. Um, so talk to us about what we're seeing there in your respawn sure. screen. Uh, as, in the respawn camera, as the on the spy team, I can switch between my teammates and see what they're doing. Oh boy! Oh and boy! So as the, for example, I can see that you, as the hacker, <laughs> are failing me. Uh, and now there's going to be that brief window, the 14 seconds, uh, for the spies to restart the hack. But there's a lot of mercs in that area. And, uh, and it really is good. worth noting that that's basically the exact uh, same amount of that time down to respawn. Right So now that, that you can see directly affects the, the kind of core philosophies in, in terms of spies versus mercs where... Try and move around these guys. You know, it's, it's not... Stealth advantage. It's not necessarily about getting kills. It's about, uh, it's about completing the objective and, and really just staying alive. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing that great. We've only got one, one terminal hacked. All right. So uh, while I'm getting worked over in C, See, you're moving towards the uh, the server room there, and I've and got some mercs hack. coming up to me. Crap! So oh remember, boy. you're the hacker. What you want to do is hide. And I want to I want to get some support from my teammates, hopefully too. I'm working on it. Working on it. <laughs> oh boy. Particle accelerator has all these great routes for the spy up in high areas of the map. Uh, so the spies can really get around quickly, and utilize their advantage, which is climbing and, and, uh, and stealth to be in unexpected places. I can see they might be close to you there. Uh -oh. Oh. Okay. One of them has figured out where I am. Yeah, I'm seeing this uh, with the silhouettes. Thankfully, you know, as the hacker, they're kind of, they're going away from my situation. I'm going to tag oh, these oh, guys. I got taken out by a uh, proxy mine. Oh, you're right. doing great. Bearing down. I'm running out of options. Oh, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Remember, you can climb up high on top of things, be in unexpected places. Okay. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds left. And we're at 75%. Now remember, the clock is going to get extended. See where these mercs are. Oh, there's one right behind me. I'm trying to be as distracting as possible right now. Okay, we're all in the same spot. This is good. We're at 99%. Boom! Alright, so we'll delve into how the gameplay changes in first person perspective when we take on the role of the mercs in part two of this Spies vs. Mercs Blacklist feature Absolutely. from San Diego Comic Con.